Hi, this is Steve Pierce with Framework Productions, and in this season of Adorama Beyond the Sound, we're going to take you through most everything you need to know about recording live audio, working with multiple cameras at a time, lighting for a live setting, plus directing, editing, and all the post-production techniques associated with working with live events. This is Adorama Beyond the Sound. For Beyond the Sound, we're using five separate cameras, four red Heliums, and then we're also going to be using one Sony a7S. We're shooting 8K 16x9 HD, right? We're going to shoot 8K resolution. Now what does that mean? Well, 8K means if you look at the long edge of your picture, that's just under 8,000 pixels. Versus what you see whenever you're used to watching full HD, the long edge is just under 2,000 pixels wide. But one thing you have to keep in mind when shooting high resolutions is what is your compression rate? We are choosing to go eight to one, which is right in the middle. Three to one would be very little compressed, 15 to one would be very compressed. We're trying to go right in the middle so that we can still have enough information to color, especially with the shadows, because everything's so dark, we don't want to get any noise. But still compressed enough, we're not just eating up hard drive space. And we're shooting R3D raw. The files are so big, they're going to use the proxies to edit the timeline. It's just much easier on the computer that way, but then they're going to be relinked to the original files, uh, finished basically in 4K. There's a few advantages that we have with RED. The dynamic range when shooting RAW in R3D is quite big. There's going to be a lot of different colors and lights, and we want to make sure that we capture all of that. One of the cool things about RED is they have their in-camera IPP2 color space. We get a lot of ability to color the footage later, but while we're on set, we want to be able to dial in our look. We're able to work with this website called LUTIFY.ME, where we have up to 300 different LUTs or looks. And what we're able to do with that is find one we like the look of, load it up into each of the cameras, and then see in our monitors exactly what our end result will be, or very close to it. Then in post, we just get to tweak it and make it even better. All the cameras are labeled, uh, depending on where they are, going to be on the stage. We're approaching it like a, almost like a concert, uh, because it is going to be live recording and live shooting. And the idea is to get a wide shot that's constantly moving. The doorway dolly is going to be a cam, and that's going to be a moving sort of 180 degree shot. It's really important to level the dolly uh, so that the camera doesn't tilt and, and sort of shift within the shot. My key grip was operating the, uh, the doorway dolly, so we picked the pace at which we'd go with depending on the BPMs of the song. And sometimes it'll go a little faster if the song is a little faster and, and slower for a little more intimate look. And we're going to have two cameras on stage left. Uh, one of them is a very long telephoto and another one which is 30 to 105. The 30 to 105 in the Dana Dolly is primarily to stay on the lead singer. The telephoto is great because it has a lot of zoom. It can really reach way out there and get nice details. You know, fingers on a fretboard of a guitar. And we're going to have another camera on the other side, so stage right. And also on a Dana Dolly on the 30 to 105, potentially with an extender. A two-time extender which should uh, double the focal length and getting the other side and the other performers. We have one smaller camera that is just going to get a super wide shot, A7S, it's on a Rhino slider in the front. We have a, uh, I don't know if I'm getting this right actually. So. <laughs> The lenses that we're using are the Canon cinema lenses. They're really top grade, nice lenses that allow parafocal zooming, meaning as you zoom, the focus doesn't change. We have a whole range of them. We have two 30 to 105s, and then we have one which is uh, 15 to 47. The reason we chose zoom is that it allows us to change framing and composition while the performance is happening. That helps us a lot for little movements here and there. If we want to adjust, like zoom out just a little bit to get both hands in the shot. That way, if something is not working, or we can punch in and get more details. We want to be spontaneous and want to follow the music and the artists and as they're playing. 
One of the extreme advantages of having an aperture ring on a cinema lens versus a photo lens. If you've ever worked with a photography style lens, when you change aperture, it snaps, it jumps very suddenly. Cinema lenses don't do that. You rotate the aperture lens and it's a ramp effect. It's very subtle. So you can change stops and aperture without affecting the viewer's experience. We actually used a few of these plexiglass pieces um, just for a little bit of lens distortion that were also additionally lit by smaller units called beetle lights, uh, which gave like lens aberrations and, and sort of nice little flares. 